Hey Brick Maniacs, welcome back to another Designer Studio episode. Today we're taking a look at the F-117A Nighthawk, uh, designed by Skunk Works and Lockheed Martin. So this is uh, obviously an incredibly iconic aircraft, uh, and one that fits perfectly into our Desert Storm Bricks uh, monthly theme. But what an undertaking this must have been, because you've got, I mean, there are things going <laughs> every direction here, and none of them it look was, like they coordinate It, it well. was by far one of the most interesting builds I've done. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a big plane, but it's not that big. You know, I would have preferred to make this big, huge, like, uh, Technic brick in, you know, frame inside of it, mm -hmm. but because of the bomb bays, because of the wheels and the way it's all built, I, you know, it's, it's like old school. It's like plates and hinges. Mm -hmm. um, it was like building the Galaxy Explorer back in the day or something. Sure. You know? Um, only complicated by the fact that this, 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 this wedge shape actually isn't a, doesn't follow the Lego grid. It's a mm -hmm. little off, so the wings are actually tucked in a little bit to get that, that, that perfect delta. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it was an interesting build. Uh, I wasn't sure when I started it how I was going to be able to do it, pull right. it off, but it came together quite well. Um, the only thing that I, the, the building experience of this, this is a, a difficult build. Mm -hmm. Um, designing it was fun, it took me several days to do it, and then to make it repeatable, that was a real challenge. Yeah, I bet. Um, plus, when I first made it, I, I was looking at a model. So this thing was top secret. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a Skunk Works, this is Lockheed Martin, this is like old school. Um, hush, uh, hush, 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 hush. Right. So I was looking at models and old old drawings stuff that were actually like kind of like back from the 90s, and they were mm -hmm. speculative, like, here's how the Bombay's open, and they were like, and that's how I made my model with the Bombay doors on the outside. Sure. And then the more I researched, the more I realized that, oh, that was wrong. It was wrong information. <laughs> sure. That was like somebody's, somebody's 90s model, but there's been updated versions come out mm -hmm. since then, and pictures and stuff have shown that the Bombay doors, in fact, open from the inside. So mm -hmm. I actually had to rebuild the whole thing to get the Bombay doors to <laughs> In the right out. spot. Right. So research a big part of it, I mean, uh, keeping that yeah. uh, super accurate. But then also just like, Capturing this shape, I'm sure, was pretty intimidating when you, because you know, you lay it out on the on the blueprints you have, and probably the top down one not so bad. I couldn't even really find blueprints. I mean, it's, right. it's, it's that, and when you find a blueprint, you're looking at a side view and a top view. Mm -hmm. So there's drawings of it out there, but right. they don't give you the angles or anything like that. So um, I had to really study whatever the available the available materials out there. There's a few models. I think Ravel made a model of it, like mm -hmm. a, a scale model. So I was able to look at people's pictures that they had posted of the, the finished model. That, that gave me a lot of clues to, to, how to how to shape it. I did end up simplifying it a little bit. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like an angular diamond shape, which... which that's, a, that's a great way to describe it, it, yeah. it, it the, whole, <laughs> the whole point is to uh, direct the radar cross-section. So mm -hmm. if, if this is being picked up by ground radar or another air-to-air -air radar, the angles will actually make that the, the cross-section, it'll, it'll bounce and deflect the radar uh, return in a directed area way so it doesn't go back to the sender. Right. So um, apparently the, the radar signature of this, this thing flying around is about the size of a baseball. <laughs> <laughs> that's absurd. So, I mean the actual, you know, the act, that's, that's just sure. like speculative. The actual, who knows, I mean the Air Force probably knows. Mm -hmm. um, with a lot of their stealth planes, they actually put on uh, uh, electronics on the plane itself to emit a radar signature. So. They can't when it's flying around. It's not. They're not able to tell how small it really is. Right, It'll exactly. show up on radar because they have these um, devices, basically that that, that decloak it. Wow. <laughs> well, the amount of technology packed into this thing, first of all, incredible. And then the the, the feats. Obviously, a lot of people remember who were back, you know, alive during Desert Storm or experienced that when they were old enough. Uh, remember kind of that initial run into Baghdad with all of this happening. Right. This was the only aircraft in the in the US military that was allowed f to do targeted strikes inside the city of Baghdad because of how accurate it was. Well, and, and it, they only announced, they only revealed it right before the war. I mean, mm -hmm. right, it was literally like, there was speculation that this thing existed, but they said, okay, this is it. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna use it. We have to tell people it exists. Sure. Um, it's not a fighter. It's called the stealth fighter. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that was probably, you know, military way of covering up the true purpose of this thing. It's a stealth bomber. Right. So it's a tactical bomber. Same thing as like the F-104. It's, it's designed to carry a payload mm -hmm. penetrating deep into enemy territory. The idea with this though, instead of using like an electronic jammer, which they'd done with like the wild weasel, you know, they, they, they experimented and developed and, and, and actually kind of perfected these things. They're still working on them now. Mm -hmm. Electronic jammer pods, but why not build an airplane that it's very shape and it's very way it's built um, defeats most radar and even IR, infrared tracking. Mm -hmm. So part of the weird, the, the tail on there, you see that triangular, triangular shape of the tail. It doesn't have normal uh, jet out, you know, the, right. it doesn't have the normal like uh, 
you know, I guess whatever, yeah, vents, whatever you want to call them. It doesn't, it's not like a normal shape. The jets are actually inside the fuselage. Mm -hmm. And then the, the uh, exhaust is kind of forced through this big wide dispersal area. So it's, it's designed to uh, not only like, you know, minimize radar cross section, but actually infrared, the, the heat will be dissipated. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So it's flying with turbine jet, tur you know, engines, uh, very similar to like, say the A-10. Yeah, the Warthog. It's not designed to go, you know, or a modern jetliner or airliner for that matter. Mm -hmm. It's not designed to, you know, it doesn't have afterburners. It's not designed like that, like the Raptor or something. It's not right. an air-to-air -air combat. In fact, this thing has no guns on it. Because mm -hmm. it's not supposed bombs. to be, yeah, yeah, tracked. And, well, and it's interesting, you know, obviously this is an, an official Lockheed Martin product. Um, uh, they're licensed by them, and so we use their information when we, when we put stuff together. One of the things I found that was interesting is they kind of credited this aircraft with being the one that changed the game of, of aerial combat in the sense of, how many aircraft do you need to take out a target versus how many targets can we get with one aircraft or maybe right. two of them flying in tandem? Right. Well, this, 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 this particular plane was designed around a 2,000 pound um, guided, guided, guided bomb. It's a mm -hmm. free fall bomb, but it's guided, uh, it could be by laser. There's actually different guidance systems that they can use to, to do this. This thing actually has a, a forward looking infrared. It's like, like a tracking ball. Yeah, it right. has a forward on, on the nose, forward one, and then there's another one. Um, it's so that's a FLIR is the forward looking infrared mm -hmm. and they have a bottom one on the bottoms because that thing's pointed in a certain it can only see can't see below the horizon right, of the aircraft. Yeah. There's another one on the bottom so it's like it's the delur the downward looking infrared so mm -hmm. it has like these you know it's a it's a sight system it also is a targeting system so they lo they drop their bomb they can be 10 miles away up in up in the air and the bomb will 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 be targeted just by you know using its inertia going down mm -hmm. but it has a a targeting, um, you know, a, so we can a, adjust. Yeah, a, a avionics package inside there mm -hmm. that actually can adjust the way the fins. So you're using an old, you know, an old World War II era dumb bomb, basically, with a smart package on it that will that will guide it into to where it needs target. to go. Yeah. Hey, I suppose that's all about what it is, though, is getting getting that payload to where it is instead of just like increasing the bomb size and so right. you hit where you hit. This is a lot more targeted. Yeah, this 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 plane is designed around to hold his twin bomb bays, and it's designed to each one of those bomb bays will hold a single two thousand pound J dam. Mm -hmm. like, uh, which is basically guided munitions. Mm -hmm. So there's different ones. This one's, I think it's a GBU-28, okay. 2,000 pound. I think it's specifically for that. They can use smaller weapons, but they can't use the biggest ones. They, they made actually bigger bombs. When they found out the 2,000 pound bombs couldn't hit, like couldn't destroy the, the biggest Iraqi targets. Mm -hmm. Or the bunker busters and right, stuff yeah, like that. Right, they built yeah. it, I think it was like an 8,000 pound version. Jeez. That they'd, they'd take a bigger airplane, obviously it wouldn't go in, it couldn't be stealthy like this, because mm -hmm. the bomb would be hanging off the bottom of it. But I think they were using F-111s. Big enough um, punch to know it's coming. Right, and it would, they, they, they would take the barrel of a M109 howitzer, uh, a used M109 howitzer would become the case of the bomb. Holy smokes. <laughs> so it's, it's, you know, talk about repurposing. Yeah, So no when, when these, when the, you know, the 155 millimeter howitzer, once they, they've shot so many rounds through the barrel that they, the barrel's like disposable. Right. Then they found another use for it. Let's pack it full. Yeah, they made these Holy super smokes. bunker buster bombs that could like, <laughs> they could burrow like miles underground and, oh. and you know, do their, do their thing. That is, that is absolutely crazy. So, I mean, obviously there's some really unprecedented printing, especially going on with this canopy but oh, right. first but first let's get to just kind of some of the design stuff i know you want to talk a little bit about the landing gear you want to talk about the stand where do you want to start with all that right well the one the one thing that's interesting when you build this thing you build it flat on the table yeah and and, and if you if you buy one of these and you're building it follow the follow, it, it is a <laughs> linear build you, you should follow the steps exactly how they're, they're laid out otherwise you're going to have a hard time going back because it this the weird shape of this thing it's hard mm -hmm. to pick up um the last step is actually putting the stand on it Mm -hmm. um, and I also want to warn you, if you want to display it standing up like this, um, you can do that, no problem. But once you put that stand on there, you're gonna, it's going to be an extensive rebuild to get that stand off because it sticks on so well. Mm -hmm. you, when you pull it out, uh, unless you're really, really careful, you're going to pull the guts of the airplane out. With sure. It. Um, so that's kind of the, that's kind of the trade-off with being able to have this stand as like right. something that help you swoosh it. It has to be sturdy enough to get up in there and really grab onto it. And then like he was saying earlier, there's no there's no room for a technic interior in here, right? So that's kind of what you get in the sense of, of playability is you use the stand, right? The, inter <laughs> the in inside here there's a structure with the bomb bay and the cockpit, very sturdy. But the wings, I mean, it's, and I've seen the people who made their their like one thirty fifth scale models, like mm -hmm. scale models, they're like you, you, they're, you can tell they're having a hard time. Like where do we pick it up? Because <laughs> it's not a traditional airplane with a fuselage. You can swoosh it like like say the SC twenty seven. Right. This is completely the opposite. You could pick it up by its wings. I wouldn't recommend it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The, the wings at the angle that they are, there's only two attachment points to get sure. them at that right angle. 
Uh, it's sturdy enough. I mean, you can pick this bad boy up. Mm -hmm. And here, I'll, I'll show you the bottom here. This is the, the bottom of the aircraft with the bomb bays open, the two JDAMs are cool. in there. Landing gear open, all that stuff. Um, it is possible to display it this way. Not, yeah. not, a, not a, you know, it's, it's not a super big feat, but once you put that stand on it, Mm -hmm. you're, you're pretty much precluding this without a, a, a you know, a you'll be 20, rebuilding. 20 minute rebuild yep. because you'll, you'll basically pull the bottom of the aircraft off mm -hmm. as you pull that stand off. Which you can, you can see how far in, in there that goes. Yeah, it has to be in there because this thing is quite a heavy model. Yeah, it and is. In order it's to get that stand to. to be, to be on there sturdy, I, I, I did a special reinforced stand. Well, and how far back it is too, to be able to support that, that super <laughs> flat bottom, you know, that's... Well, that's, there's a bomb bay there. You have to put the stand all the way in the back. Right, right. <laughs> you've, got, you've got to make work. But just, you know, having that functionality uh, so that you get the bomb bay door that opens and a stand that, like I said, you can pick up and swoosh around. Uh, I think the trade-off is fair in that, right. in that well, regard. Right. Well, it was the same with the F-105. It mm -hmm. has a big bomb bay in the middle, too. So you do have a trade-off. You know, just, you know, me, I, I picked two airplanes that... <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> Two in a row that have big, big bomb bays underneath them. I think people would rather have to swoosh it around using the stand than not have the F-117 exist in yeah. Lego form. So no, no, this is, this is quite a feat. I'm, I'm very happy with how it turned out. Mm -hmm. um, it is more of a display piece than I would sure. like it to be. I'd rather have my airplanes pick them up, swoosh them around, manhandle them, rough them around, play with them, dive bomb your kids with them, whatever. <laughs> but I wouldn't recommend it with this. Unless you have it on a stand, that mm -hmm. makes it way more swooshable. The stand is basically like a, a pistol grip. Which I kind of like, to be honest, especially <laughs> with how flat the bottom is. You don't have to feel like you'd be careful. You can just kind of, yeah, you know, yeah. give, it the, give it the juice. So, all right, let's switch over to the printing because we got to talk about this canopy. Yeah. Um, you know, another another huge pain in the A for, for <laughs> UV, but man, when it comes together like that, they did an well, absolutely Well, the, the interior of the job. cockpit is printed too, so you have the kind of the dashboard panel, you can't see in this angle, of course, because the pilot would be looking at that, and then the, the side cockpits with the control. You might be able to know, get in there if I, go like, if I go like this. Trust, trust us, it's, it has a printed... printed it looks uh, cool. <laughs> right, exactly. It does, it does. Okay. So, well, and, and, and printing, you know, and people... People speculate, oh, you could, if you guys just want it, you could just keep printing on these things. I don't think anybody realizes how much work goes into a printed element. So it looks great on the model, but so many people have to have their fingers involved in that yep. printing. So you have to have an artist design it. You have to you know, research it, get all that information first. Artist has to design it, and then the printing has to be actually printed on the brick, has to be put in the instructions, has to be put in the render. There's like a dozen people handle that piece mm -hmm. just because it's printed. And that multiply that by like 10, 20 printed pieces on a kit. Well, and it's with a this, ton of extra work. With this kit, particularly too, because of the, the rarity of the piece that you're <laughs> printing on, you don't get a lot of like trial and error no, no, to no, get no. those prints lined up. That, you that got can, maybe one or two. That, can, that, that canopy thick. was a that was a that was a one and done. I mean it was it was printed many, many times with masking tape first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, right, <laughs> right, exactly. So that, that was an important way to do it and is, is definitely a huge part of the process. So right. you got the instructions here, as you can see it is a it's a right. it's a it, big book. It is a monster piece. This is this is the sample instruction, so you can there's there are some notes in this particular room. Mm -hmm. Uh, it does tell you where the the stickers go, which was kind of <laughs> which we had to go look up because we got one set of stickers. We yeah. put we put them on the top. There's a there's a sticker for the top and bottom. But top we, and the bottom. We we have one sticker sheet. Uh, production offered to run down another set, but uh, of course the sticker placement is is a key part of the instruction book. Mm -hmm. uh, it is important as is, as shown in the instruction book. Last step. I don't know if you can see that. Put the stand on. You build it flat on the table. That's mm -hmm. very important because you need to be able to push you know crank down on these pieces. Yeah. Uh, if you don't, your plane's going to be floppy. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to be like swooshing your plane and lose a wing in the process. <laughs> so yeah, this is this is this has been handled many times. We've we've built two now. This, mm -hmm. one, this is the prototype. It's been built about eight times at this point. <laughs> well, so. it'll be a fantastic display model in all of our stores, and uh, and and that's where it'll be currently available out of batch one, or like Dan said, hopefully batch two is either already available or on its way uh, to to being on pre-order very very soon. Yep. So there you have it, the F-117 Nighthawk in all of its glory. It does come with a custom minifigure, so we'll chat with Landon here in a second. But before we do, anything else you want to go over on no, this? No, this is a fun model to build. Um, you know, like I said before, it's more of a display piece. You, mm -hmm. you can swoosh it around, but if you're going to make an air base or something like that, it's, it's it, it, you know, like a, like a display to bring it to show. Uh, you can do it. It certainly, uh, certainly is a display piece. You're not just going to want to be able to pick them up and, right. and show them off. It's... Well, it's, it's got all the eye-catching that a display piece would need, and I, I like the way that it goes in the stand. And the fact that you can use the stand to be swooshable is definitely, <laughs> definitely I think, a huge perk of this because it is, it is something that, you know, is sleek and fun to fly right. around. And it's so. black. I wish, you know, it, it, it dawned on me after we set this thing into production, I should have made the stand a contrasting color, like white or sure. light blue or something like that. I, I, too late, you know, there's, there's, there's so many, you know. Some people do, might like the blacked-out look. In the future, someday, 
I'll, I'll, I'll think ahead of it and, and do it a little bit better. But fair enough. You know. Well, all right. Let's go over this minifig now and uh, and bring in Landon here to take a look at the uh, F117 Nighthawk pilot. Okay, so now for part two, we got Landon joining here hey. because obviously somebody's got to fly this thing, and that's me. Oh, this. the minifigure. No, yeah. it's that person. Okay, I can fly too, but you can well, fly. You can fly an F117. Yeah, I have a very it's hard easy. time believing that. It's pretty easy. Um, <laughs> so minifigure, right? He's uh -huh. this person. This pilot is decked out in sort of a desert uh, flight suit, desert colored flight suit, um, kind of just given the environment that they uh, were often flying in. Uh, this particular minifigure would maybe work for, um, I guess even all the way back to kind of when they were first flying, mm -hmm. um, some of the gear seems to have, uh, you'll still see it out in the field. So the, the anti-G um, su uh, suit, um, it's a comparable model to what they're still flying today. Mm -hmm. So even if, even if we are still seeing this in the modern configuration, I think this, this minifigure, uh, I went for kind of a general, um, uh, all-encompassing minifigure. Yeah, uh, which makes sense. Here. So, um, survival vest, um, and we have this um, P, uh, personal flotation um, system. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a pull cord thing and it just poofs up around your around your neck and everything. Mm -hmm. um, there's a pistol holster on the front as well. And then we have uh, just this parachute harness um, all around the minifigure. I'm really liking the the different kind of contrast of colors. You know, a lot of these, these survival vests and anti-G suits were kind of developed in like sort of a Vietnam era. Sure. So you'd see that a lot of this jungle color colorway, and even just the Air Force, they, they got their Air Force blue colors, like the greenish blue. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just liking the, I really like these contrasting color minifigures. It's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. With the gloves, I mean, into the tan and into the yeah. vest, and then even the white helmet, like it's a, it's a pretty figure. Yeah, and I'm a, I'm a huge fan of that white Lego helmet. Um, I think they do a really good job. Uh, it just, it's just, it looks like classic Lego, but in like a really nicely refined kind of modern mm -hmm. way. Um, there is a clipboard on the leg, and that's kind of got, it's got one, it's an identifying, um, like a U.S. flag. If this pilot were to go down, they'd need to kind of identify themselves, mm -hmm. I guess. U.S. flag, there's maybe a little bit of a map detail on there. Um, and then desert boots as well. Um, I'm, I'm trying out some new textures on that. Uh, it's sort of that simulated rough out uh, sand leather um, on the boots. And what else? Got flight gloves in that sort of like that Nomax fireproof yeah. green gloves. Um, Which color matches really well. I mean, just, yeah, just with I, those minifig hands, that, that works perfectly. Yeah, that, those pilot gloves are somewhere in between sand green and dark bluish gray. So I just opted for sand green. Yeah. Just another little kind of contrast of color um, that you don't often get with minifigures. Uh, and then for the pilot, uh, opted for a female head here. Um, there's a, f a few females. There's at least one female documented uh, that would, be, would have been flying. Um, this uh the jet here so opted to go with that face so, yeah absolutely yeah it's a nice overall um i think one i'm, I'm really liking this minifigure we keep releasing kits with just awesome mm -hmm. like source imagery and so it's been a ton of fun to uh design new minifigures so. yeah i mean i gotta say you know if this thing isn't flown by darth vader i suppose it's okay if it's flown yeah. by him <laughs> because you know it's just it just looks like something where it's like oh yeah, you'd inspect you'd expect some sort of imperial pilot right. to step out of this yeah, but then you get this really like brightly colored minifigure so <laughs> it's, it's, cool. it's a serious contrast between yeah. the two but i love it and i love how much there is to look at it at a minifig like this because you know you build this big model part of the satisfying portion of that build is being able to look at it and and check out all the details and stuff that's packed in there. So excellent job once again. This is a fantastic kit. The F-117A Nighthawk. This has been the Designer Studio episode. Uh, make sure to check the link in the description for the availability of this kit. Otherwise, we will see you next time.